Hey, what's happening, friends? It's Prism Prime. Some of you might already know me as Dean from Electronic Sounds. I'm a sound designer, an electronic musician, and a YouTuber. Welcome to my space. So my room basically consists of a few different stations in a small space. I'm going to start by just walking you through the individual stations, and then maybe we'll take a little bit more of a close detailed look at these. This is my first station here. This is kind of my PC and storage uh, station. My main PC is actually dead right now, and I'm in the process of replacing it. So I'm currently using just an older uh, PC laptop. I do all of my audio editing uh, on PC using a software called sound forge and this is a really really big part of my uh, you know daily workflow just editing samples in here uh, as a sound designer I also use a lot of iPads um, in my music production and in my uh, YouTube channel so I've got an iPad here lots of gear uh, stored in and amongst the shelves this is kind of my main hangout and like my audio editing station over here we've got the big desk which basically uh, right now is consisting of this giant Euro rack setup, which I'm calling the centerpiece. I've also got um, a few other Euro rack odds and ends and cases about that I can use um, for individual jams and also um, for YouTube videos. Um, doing a lot of you know YouTube demonstration videos means that I really need to have um, you know quite a lot more gear than I would normally need to have if I was just using this gear for producing music alone. I've got a lot of guitar pedals up here on top of the modular that I can route uh, into the system. Got a collection of uh, guitar pedals here that I can use to you know, route to anything uh, in this system that I want to. Uh, I've got an Akai MPC Live over here. This is uh, my main um, Ableton station, and this is uh, a Mac. And basically, I found that while trying to use, you know, Ableton in a really robust uh, environment like I have here on PC uh, was sort of lacking for me. And I was missing a lot of tight uh, MIDI sync and MIDI um, like control. And I was able to really solve all of my MIDI problems once I invested in a really expensive Mac. Um, although these days I'm not really using Ableton as much as I am uh, with the, the hardware. After doing this for so many years and editing samples, you know, thousands and thousands of samples on the daily, uh, my mouse finger really has a serious case of repetitive stress uh, injury. And that's definitely one of the reasons why I have so much hardware in here. You definitely do not need this amount of hardware just for, you know, making music and having a good time. This is not the cost of entry, but as a sound designer and as a YouTuber, I have a lot, you know, of other needs for this type of gear. What we have over here is basically my main live streaming um, station. This changes every week. I do a live stream every Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, so like Sunday mornings in the U.S., I believe that my live stream is 6 p.m. UK time every Sunday. And we <laughs> go over everything from sound design to music creation to putting music together on iPads to putting music together with the Akai Force to sampling to Eurorack stuff. Here's another Eurorack case here more storage underneath here which you can't see because the lighting is a little screwy and then more storage in the back of the room here I've got a closet uh, in the back behind this curtain which stores a whole lot more gear we've got a studio buddy over here hey say good morning Opie nope he's asleep all right I'd like to start off by taking a moment and discussing my favorite thing about this room. It's not a piece of gear, it's actually the acoustic treatment. I'm not sure if it's coming through on this video just how quiet and silent and non-reflective the sound is in this room, but basically what I've got here is I've got two-thirds of this room that has been professionally acoustically treated. It took two guys five days to do this acoustic treatment in here. And basically, I used to be focused this way, and I tried everything I could come up with, from little foam things and baffles and extra carpets and what like, you know, to try to tame the sound in here. And no matter what I was able to do, or no matter what acoustic products or nonsense 
I hung from the ceiling in here, it didn't really stop the acoustic reflections and the sound just sounding pretty awful in here and very inaccurate. As a sound designer, that's the most important thing for me is I really need to know that what I'm hearing is an accurate representation of the sounds that I'm creating. So basically, these guys built a frame um, on this entire wall. I used to have a window over here that's now been blocked by this acoustic treatment and there's about four inches of rock wool um, acoustic treatment behind this black fabric and that makes the sound in here really really like dead sounding there's no reflections and the sound doesn't bounce around the room it's really accurate for monitoring speaking of monitoring I have three ways that I monitor my sound in here I'm using um, for my you know, main editing and work speakers where I really need to hone in on those frequencies and make sure what I'm hearing is accurate, I'm using a pair of Focal Shape 6s for my monitors. But in this setup over here, and when I'm just kind of messing around and working with you know various gear and I want to flip some speakers on, I'm using a pair of really old and really shitty Behringer Truth monitors that I've had for about 17 years, maybe longer. And the reason that I'm still using these quite often and you know as one of my main ways to monitor is because my ears have just gotten really really used to how music sounds on those speakers um, and I really find that I can get you know a pretty accurate representation on these because my ear is just trained to them so well that being said, I know a lot of people don't even have monitor speakers and work on headphones exclusively. I also work a lot on headphones. I don't want to, you know, create a big feud with the neighbors who are pretty close here. And, you know, these monitors can get pretty loud if you get my drift. Um, so my main headphones are a pair of Sennheiser HD 650s. These do need um, a headphone amplifier to, you know, work properly and really get an accurate representation of your sound. And for that, I've invested in a headphone amplifier that's actually more expensive than the headphones themselves. I'm using a Rupert. Uh, Neve headphone amplifier with those Sennheiser HD 650s to really get that nice sound when I'm working in here like late night on headphones. Okay, let's just take a quick moment and talk about my infatuation with Eurorack because I'm sure many of you are thinking, Dean, what is up with this? Your system probably costs more than my car and most assuredly takes you longer to get something going in this than it would for the average person to get something going in like a DAW such as Ableton. That is all definitely accurate. Eurorack was always something that I thought about as something that I might get into later in my twilight years. Maybe after I had retired or something to that effect. I'm not even sure what that means as a sound designer, but something that I might, you know, look for later in life as a way to like spend my time, you know. Unfortunately, about four and a half years ago, I developed a really severe case of tinnitus, which has only gotten louder and more intense over the last few years. This has really kind of sped up a few of the things on like my future, you know, bucket list for things that I wanted to do musically because now's pretty much the time for me as my tinnitus is continually getting louder and getting more intense. If I want to do things musically, I'm squeezing as much things as I can into every single day now. And on that note, I just want to remind you to make sure that you're all using a decibel meter when you're monitoring on your monitors. You can download a decibel meter for free for your phone and make sure that you're not monitoring at too high of a level. I monitored at way too high of a level on a daily basis for years, and it's left me with really serious tonight and you don't want that friends make sure you're using a decibel meter all right for those of you who aren't already familiar with me, I started Electronic Sounds in 1994 and I've been doing sound design and making sound banks for over 25 years. I've made sound banks for the Electron Digitact, several for the Electron Model Samples, for the uh, Korg Electribes. I'm currently working on a, a sound bank now for the uh, Medusa Synthesizer from PolyEnd. Check me out over at electronisounds.com. But what I'm probably most passionate about in here right now is this brand new device. This is the Dirty Wave Mate Tracker, and it's a little tiny Game Boy sized 
piece of awesomeness. This little tiny handheld device is battery operated, so I don't need you know to give it wall power. Uh, it has three built-in synthesizers. It actually has um, a mutable instruments braids module oscillator algorithm. So there's actually um, a Euro rack module inside this. It has an FM synthesizer and it has uh, an analog synthesizer as well as being able to load stereo samples. And it's just a little handheld device. I'm really getting a lot of use out of this. You can even sample audio directly into it over audio or over USB. I'm getting a lot of fun out of this little guy. You're probably not going to be making, you know, the most uh, top 10 beat port, you know, single with something like this, but pretty much anything other than that and all bets are off. Now I'm sure a lot of the other studio tours today are talking really specifically about their workflow and their process. I apologize that we're not really getting into that aspect of what I do in here, but that's sort of my thing, is that I don't really have a workflow per se. I sort of do it all from iPad production to desktop DAW production to working with the hardware and working with the Euro rack. My workflow and my setup in here changes pretty much on the daily. Hey, thanks for checking out my space, everyone. My set for Clown Fest is going to be on day seven, and I've put together a 20-minute old-school freestyle drum and bass vibe set using the Akai Force and some vintage gear like the uh, Korg Electribe EMX-1, the Quasi-Midi Sirius, and the Quasi-Midi Revolution. It's going to be a drum and bass feast that you're not going to want to miss. See you on day seven. Thanks to Mark for having me, and thanks for watching, everyone.